The MacBook Pro M2 Max is a great laptop, but is it good for programming? I will try to answer that question in this video. Also, for simplicity, I will refer to this MacBook as the 14-inch M2 Max throughout the rest of the video. Before we start, I want to specify that this is the base model 14-inch M2 Max with 32GB of unified memory and 1TB SSD. As with other MacBook for programming reviews, I like to start with some Xcode tests. This is because I know Xcode can be a heavy application to run, especially when running the simulator on large projects. As expected with a MacBook of this caliber, starting and coding on Xcode is a very smooth experience. To better test Xcode, I cloned the Xcode benchmark project from GitHub as this test allows us to compare the results with other popular Apple computers. As always, before running the benchmark test it is important to follow the instructions by turning off the Wi-Fi, disabling all software running a startup, updating the battery settings, and rebooting the MacBook. With the MacBook plugged in, I can now run the test. The 14-inch M2 Max ran the test in only 85 seconds. For comparison, the 14-inch M2 Pro ran it in 93 seconds. The 13-inch M2 Pro and M2 Air ran it in 116 and 130 seconds respectively. Next is web development. Although this laptop might be overkill for web development, I still wanted to go over it because I normally get a lot of questions regarding web development. As with most laptops, Web development IDEs such as VS Code will run with absolutely no issues on this MacBook. Therefore, I wanted instead to run the Speedometer Browser Benchmark, which measures the responsiveness of web applications. This benchmark uses demo web applications to simulate user actions such as adding to-do items. The 14-inch M2 Max got a score of 392 runs per minute. In comparison, the 14-inch M2 Pro got a score of 364 runs per minute. The 13-inch M2 Pro got a score of 348 runs per minute. This means that for web development you might not see an improvement from the base model 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now onto some Python tests. As usual, I like to start with the Python Mandel Prod algorithm as it stresses the CPU to test how powerful it is. The 14-inch M2 Max ran it in only 33 seconds. This is two times faster than the 14-inch M2 Pro, which ran it in one minute and nine seconds. As usual, I also ran the TensorFlow autoencoder. I first set up the development environment using Anaconda and was ready to run the test. The autoencoder ran the 10 input images and it took the neural network only 18 seconds to reconstruct these images. Again, for comparison, the 14-inch M2 Pro did it in 26 seconds. And the 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro ran it in 1 minute and 12 seconds. As you can see, for AI-related programming you will definitely benefit from the 14-inch Pro or Max. Because some of the recent MacBook have issues with SSD speeds, I wanted to see if this one is also affected. Using the Blackmagic benchmarking app, I got consistent write speeds of around 6200 megabytes per second and read speeds of around 5300 megabytes per second. This is about the same as the 14-inch M2 Pro, but faster write speeds than the 14-inch M1 Pro, which was at 5300 megabytes per second. For those of you who like using the MacBook with external monitors, you will be happy to know that the 14-inch and 16-inch M2 Max support up to four external displays simultaneously. This should be more than enough for most people. In conclusion, based on the benchmark test, although this MacBook is good for programming, it might also be overkill for most people, so I'm not sure it will be worth spending the extra money. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.